Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and today I'm back with Rich and his incredible LEGO castle layout here. Some of you might have seen the first video we did on this last year, but he's added a ton of new sections and some really incredible additions onto this. So we're going to be taking you through all the new stuff in addition to a bunch of the really cool details he's added here as well. So for people who didn't see that first video, maybe give us an overview of the whole layout here and kind of what the, the general storyline is. Yeah, absolutely. First, welcome back. Thank um, you. Welcome back to the kingdom. Um, yeah, I've added a few little things to the old section uh, back towards this side of the table. Um, I've added a new tall tower in the middle of the keep, um, you know, after building, you know, you kind of get some ideas and new parts come out and you want to use them. So I, I wanted to use some new spires that had come out and just give a little bit more detail uh, to the keep there and kind of give, I don't know, I like my center to be the tallest. So I kind of wanted to put that, that new tall tower in the middle there uh, for the keep. Um, you know, a couple little things here. I've added some more trees whenever you get some downtime. If you're waiting on parts for Bricklink, I think everybody's pretty uh, familiar with, you know, what can you do in the meantime? So I've added a bunch of trees. Um, still have, you know, thousands more to go. Um, but uh, that's pretty much it on this side of the river. Um, as, you know, as we go over, there's a lot more um, over on the um, the port side of the port town. This is the, the part that's kind of changed the most since yes. our last visit. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So pretty much everything from, from here on over and then everything from the Coliseum back is brand new. Um, the shipyard, the building, the shipyard, um, still don't have my frame in there, you know, for a ship being built, but that... That's in place, added some detail around there, and then there's some, some new buildings there that have um, you know, some materials and a new entrance area. Then really wanted to get into you know, the farmland here and the vineyard and the different crops that, that, they're, that they're growing and, and working on. So that was a lot of fun. Again, wanting to go with some different angles here to kind of just change up from the, you know, from the 90s. Um, you know, and then again, some corn in the back. Added a little bit more of the village there to the hill as well. Um, as it works its way works it its way back towards the Coliseum. You know, I've wanted to build a, a fighting arena. Didn't know what I was going to do originally. I was going to do, you know, the, maybe a wood frame little jousting area. But then I was like, you know, I was watching a lot of movies and wanted to just <laughs> put together an old Coliseum. And in my head canon, that's an old Roman Coliseum that had hung around for a while. And now you, they're using it as just, you know, a fighting arena. Uh, then on the outside of that, I'll, I'll build a jousting area to the outside for like a whole events kind of area. You know, and I'll put some tents up. But... Yeah, just wanted to build some more water, some more details, some little areas where people can walk and, and go through a, the road into the kingdom. And that brings us to this incredible castle edition. And so we'll definitely kind of dive into more of the details of what we just looked at there. Mm -hmm. But I want to start with this new castle because this thing is big and it's super detailed. So uh, give Thank us you. kind of the, the overview and the story of this and then we can dive into the details. Yeah, pretty much a year ago, uh, right after last year's line of BrickCon, I wanted to do something totally different. Um, I wanted to take a step away from the Lion Knights, which is a lighter, brighter uh, build, more simple. Um, I wanted to go a completely different color, darker, um, and I wanted to do the Fright Nights. So um, it's a total different style. It's a lot more textured. Um, I knew I wanted it one color, um, but I wanted that color to be, to be pretty detailed. So it's a lot of, a lot of plates, a lot of tiles, um, a lot of texture in there just to kind of give it some, some detail and make it interesting looking. It creates that sort of pockmarked effect almost on the wall there. So what, what are some of those pieces that create that? It looks like a lot of masonry bricks, and is it kind of one by one round? Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, pretty much, not only, but 99% of the brick that's in there is masonry brick, and then everything else is, is a plate or a quarter tile. The quarter tiles add some nice different kind of detail, and thankfully those have been on the pad walls for a bit. Um, and then there's some circular tiles and just, you know, circular uh, stud, you know, plates. Uh, thrown in there just to you know change things up and it's very methodical you work your way up and you just want to use random things as you work you know go up and then I wanted some nice angles again I wanted things you know not to be squares and I wanted some towers to be on angles um, and then I wanted to put some floating towers out there as well to make it interesting. Yeah, I think it's really cool how you've incorporated these smaller towers into the rock work out here as you mm -hmm. sort of approach the castle. Uh, I think that's a neat design. And then this little walkway here, and what's the, what's the story of what's happening here with yeah, these so guys? In my head, that's a procession. So there's, as we get around to the back, you'll see. But the idea behind here is that they're feeding the, uh, and I always want to say Batman, the man bat, the <laughs> creature that's in the, the bowels of the castle. And so they're out on the march again to find another offering for the man bat. And that's pretty much where the Red River comes from. So they're, uh, the, the, the remnants of the, uh, the offerings are what flow out of there and kind of feed the uh, the group. So they're on their march to go get another one led by 
I don't know, some witch and you know their little <laughs> their little run they're on. But yeah, I wanted some watchtowers on the periphery. Um, you know, to kind of defend the castle. Sure. I wanted to be pretty well fortified too. I wanted to be kind of realistic. And that takes us to kind of the main tallest section here, which stands out not just because of the height, but also because of the different color there. So uh, how'd you decide to go with that just because the, the color of the minifigs themselves and kind of contrasting that? Yeah, so when I was building it, I, I, I knew in the in the regular, the dark ray towers, I wanted my windows to be a different color and I played with, is it dark brown, is it red? You know, kind of in, you know, owed back to the original or is it a dark red? I really like the way the dark red contrasts with the dark gray. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went to the main tower, that's basically Basil's tower. Um, I wanted that to be totally different, to really stick out. And I, I like the way the dark gray kind of keeps kicking its way up in the middle, but I wanted that dark red to really stick out. And I think it works really well with the, with the dark gray. Um, yeah, so I was really pleased with that. Um, besides that tower though, and I wanted to add a lot of ornateness to that, um, the first big tower I built was this one over on the right, and that's Willa's tower. So <laughs> in the original one, Willa was always, you know, separate, and the canon is, you know, she has her own little portion of, you know, the army. Basil's off to the side, and, you know, she has her own thing. So that's her own tower, and she does her own spells or whatever it may be there, and she's got her dragon. But Basil and his army is, is out behind with the main force. Um, so I wanted her to have special. And I like probably her tower to me looks a little better. Um, it's it, it's thick, it's 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 strong looking, but it's hers. And then you know Basil has his own uh, going on in the background. One of the elements that adds so much detail here and really makes a stand out is the way that you've added little details to the towers and kind of mm -hmm. the tops and sides of things. What are some of the pieces you use there to make it not just kind of a bunch of of gray pieces in a wall? Yeah. So and and, and you know there's there's only you know nothing here is is revolutionary, but I I you know you have a lot of pieces and as you're going through online and online pad and you're like oh this would be cool and I, just compiling these pieces you know whether it be a ski or some kind of you know spear at the end or you know any of the um, you know different pieces that that are out there the little you know uh, modified plates. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted a lot of detail gothic very Dracula's castle Transylvania inspired architecture um, just you're able to play with the Fright Nights a bit you're able to go out on you know a little wild with it especially with the floating towers um, that was really fun. And how did you get those floating towers to stay on because when you first look at those it definitely looks a little precarious. Yeah well there's definitely <laughs> one that is a little precarious just because of the way it sits. Uh, but they're locked in pretty well with plates. I had looked at possibly using Technic, but that's the way some of them are built with their, um, the way it comes in and everything is modular, right? So every level keeps going up and it really wouldn't work well for me for, for Technic and it'll kind of shift a little bit. So I wanted to lock it in with plates pretty well. So uh, yeah, the, the two of them are definitely not going anywhere. If the one on the left that John was just looking at um, moves, that that's probably has the greatest potential to fall, make a great video, but um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's locked in pretty good though. Yeah, it's pretty much, it's, you know, they're snapped in and then the weight of the towers above it pretty much lock them in. They're not, they're not going anywhere. Gotcha. And you are definitely no stranger to rock work. We see the giant mountain in the background there. Mm -hmm. So what was this rock work like uh, compared to some, some of what you've done in the past and kind of incorporating that into the structures? Yeah, the other ones were, uh, well, I knew I was going to do a dark gray castle. So I wanted to stay away from dark gray as I'd done in the past. Plus I wanted to be a lot more barren, a lot more, you know, there's not a whole lot of vegetation and life here. So I wanted some dark tan in there for some dirt, uh, a lot more light gray to contrast with the dark gray castle. And then there's some dark gray obviously in there cause that's my base of mountain mm -hmm. and rock in my, in my kingdom. So yeah, I wanted to be really barren. And then there's some, I knew when those dark red uh, plant pieces came out, I knew I'd want to drop those in cause that's kind of like blood feeding the, uh, any kind of life that's here. <laughs> so that's the way they pop up and they're only down low where the, where the blood might, might feed them. You got the spiders through for the extra creepy effect throughout. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And there's some thestrals from Harry Potter on the left. Um, so if you don't end up to the man bat inside the kingdom being bled out, then you un you end up like this unfortunate Lion Knights guy being coming out and he's having a bad day. Maybe he had tacos earlier, but he's uh, he's got some excretion uh, coming out. And then the, the thestrals take care of what remains. <laughs> But there is some more details, I think, uh, on the back side here as well, right? So you can, I mean, not only the, the buildings themselves are still very detailed, but what are some of the scenes kind of down underneath there? Yeah, and it, it's always important to me, as I probably said this before, like all of my builds, I like everything to connect. If I'm a minifigure, I need to get from all the way in the bowels to the top. So everything's got a staircase, everything connects, but I like that detail inside. So the man bat is in there and he's eating away at, you know, the, the offerings. Um, and then they bleed out to his little puddle he's got in there and then, you know, you have some soldiers in there just checking on and make sure everything's going all right. Yeah, 
And so you see, uh, this, this is kind of its own like standalone section right now. How will this incorporate into the larger layout? Yeah, so this will be where we're standing, basically. If you move out this side of the, the kingdom, it would be out here a number of more feet. So that's where it would kind of slice into the kingdom. Um, and then in and of itself, it'll have more. So I plan on building here in the near future another back end to this where it'll be another 30% of the castle, some more towers, and a little bit more detail to finish off the Fright Nights. But yeah, this will be far removed from the current you know, <laughs> peaceful area of the kingdom. Well, fantastic work there. That's incredible. So we can move back into uh, the kind of village town section here. And I think we'll start with uh, the Colosseum that you mentioned earlier, which is another incredible addition to the city since we were here last mm -hmm. time. I love the way that you've kind of placed this in the midst of the, the town and the, the forest here. So take us through kind of some of the design elements on the, the outside of this and what you were looking for here. Yeah, I just, um, you know, just looking at some old Colosseums and um, looking through a lot of pictures and, you know, the real Colosseums that remained. Yeah. Um, how do I want it to look? Um, I, I knew I wanted statues on the outside, so... Um, I, they're all different figures that go all the way around it, different from different themes and factions that have been in Castle. It's kind of a little nod to them. Um, I did want it at an angle that was important to me. I didn't want it to just be squared up here. I wanted it to kind of flow uh, from where it was. And you can see the village kind of built out to where, in my head, the old Roman Romans were back in the day, and they, they're using that today as a as a fighting arena. And there's there's a number of fights going on inside the arena. There's a there's an old Princess Storm in there. Um, and there's a couple of different factions that are fighting each other and a couple of winners, a couple of losers. And I like the crowds to be full, just like I like my villagers to be full. I'm, I'm big on peasants and townspeople <laughs> and I just want there to be a big mishmash uh, of people in there. So it's, um, so it's fun. And then there's a couple of lions that are in the cage. Uh, they may come out later, uh, maybe to finish off someone or just have a little, little entertainment. But yeah, that was important to me. And the inside's all finished too. Um, and then you have this king's quarters on the other side. Um, you see the king and uh, the other, the main um, keep has the queen in there, but that's not the queen who's with them over here. So there's a little uh, sketchiness going inside the, uh, the the fighting arena also. So. It all it all ties together, the whole story. <laughs> yeah, around. yeah, I like, I like, I like the little nugget. And that's what makes it fun, right? That's what we like to do in our community and tell stories with the yeah. figures. Yep. I love this kind of line of sight down the road here with all the people got leading into the village and alongside the Coliseum. Yeah, Josh, that's ex that is probably my favorite line of sight in here. If I can get to a, like a mini figure level, I would just you know go down that street. It's it, it's it's tight, it's narrow, it you know, and it curves through. It's I like the way it organically looks like it came out of there, and the, and the roads like to come out. So out to the rest of the kingdom. <laughs> I think the, the detail for these kind of dark red sunshade pieces are really nice as well. How are those attached on there? Thank you, yeah, there, um, there's a couple of uh, ink, ink pieces, you know, the little ones and they, they snap in. I thought long and hard about those, trying to figure out how I want to do that. I thought about capes and, you know, probably yeah. everything everyone else has thought about how they do that, but I finally settled on just dark red uh, tiles and just kind of give that, that feel of, uh, of uh, you know, canopy up there. And as we move outside the Colosseum, you get a lot more of this sort of forested section. So what types of trees were you in kind of landscape were you going for in this section over here? Yeah, so this is a lot more of a wetland. And um, I wanted my, I try to be as realistic as you can with, you know, with a, with a Lego toy, right? Yeah. Um, you know, this is supposed to be nice and fertile land to build, to, to grow crops. And so I have a little creek. It's not even full. You can see there's a lot of, you know, green in between. And so it's just kind of wetland coming through. And that kind of rolls into into the fertile land for for growing crops, and it kind of in my brain kind of just underground comes out there. Um, and I did want some different trees that were around that real wetland. They're different than anything I've built before, um, just to have a little little bit of change. I love my I love doing rock work underneath. Landscaping is a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, just having that sharp little edge, a little road that's a little tight um, on the outside of the Coliseum. What were your tree designs uh, like in this section here, and kind of what? How did you do something different than what you've done in the other part of the layout? Yeah, so these ones with the little white flowers on them, I used some of those curved uh, bricks, around bricks. Uh, Great just, for trunk pieces. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, and I just wanted that to be a little bit more, I don't know, a little different looking than just the stand up trees. A little bit more detail to them. They they look they look a little more organic. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of you know <clears throat> life down in the uh, the you know the wetlands. 
And you mentioned the crops earlier. I love the variety you've got growing mm -hmm. here. So what are some of the different foods that your villagers are growing out here and how did you represent those? Yeah, so very unrealistic. Everything's growing at the exact same time. <laughs> um, you know, everything's ready to be pulled up. You know, nothing, you know, they haven't pulled up a single thing yet. It's just so much more visually pleasing. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> yeah, I wanted the color, right? So you just, just you know, temper, you know, reality for a minute. Um, yeah, there's tomatoes that John's on right now. There's, you know, a pumpkin patch. There's, you know, there's carrots, there's corn, there's apple trees, cherry trees back there. And then the, the grapes for the vineyard. Um, are in here. Yeah, and once again, just adds so much kind of life and a sense of, you know, a almost action. It's not a battle, but there's still a way to make it feel like it's being lived in and used and everything. Oh, yeah. It's just little stories you tell, you know, you're handing a tomato off to the girl, you know, <laughs> here, put this in there. And, you know, and, and this, this, this piece of map doesn't end right here. This actually goes on much further. So there's gonna be more crops I put in here you know, potato, squash, you know, all kinds of different things that go there. And I have to get to the, you know, to the animals as well. So, yeah, and um, yeah, got a little hut here for, you know, for tools for the, uh, for the farmland. Um, yeah, so it was fun to get into that, you know, getting out of the, the buildings, the architecture and getting into more, uh, you know, natural environment. Absolutely. I love your creative vision for this as well, how you still have so many ideas mm -hmm. and, and ideas for expansion. <laughs> so uh, I know this room is starting to fill up quickly. Are you, do you have plans then for how you're going to expand on this? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So again, I'm very fortunate to have a, a room like this. Uh, you know, I've told you before, if, if you know, five-year-old me, if you had told five-year-old me that I'd have a room this size, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd be overjoyed and I'm fortunate to have this. But when you build castles, and I've said this before, our kingdoms, unlike cities, where you could just keep building a gridded street and just keep going, and it's all scale-wise looks right, you can't have you know a fright night sitting right here overlooking my coliseum. Right. So, if you have the space, you'd like to be able to put that you know a number of more feet away. So, fortunately, I have a basement, um, and we're working on design for that right now uh, to build a room that's probably about four times this size. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's so, incredible. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be uh, that'll be really good. Um. Uh, yep. Parts are running out of room, and again, I have you know a lot of parts. Um, you know, it's, it's one of my things that I'm OCD, and I, it's very satisfying to restock. And um, you know, again, to have this much foliage here, you know, it's got to get laid down into into the land. Yeah, well, that's really good to know that there's plans for expansion still in the future. But we'll dive back into the village now. So kind of leaving the the farm areas uh, behind, we go into the packed building areas. So. Take us through what kind of the first section that we encounter is here. Yeah, so you come out of the farmland, there's a little entrance here. You can, you know, bring in, you know, whatever you want, you know, for egress and, and, and getting in. But this ha this area here, this is new. There's a lot more detail here. I wanted some, uh, for my shipyard to have some detail in wood and how it gets built and cut wood there. And there's logs as it comes in and I'll have a logging area as well as it, com as it comes in from the kingdom. Uh, but yeah, there'll be, a, there'll be a frame and that's where they'll build those ships and they'll shoot them out. Um, and so that's all new. Um, I've probably played with the figures, you know, a number of times as we get new, you know, like the, the goat herder, you know, we've plopping in new people here, but, you know, I wanted my port to be really packed. And again, this will come out a little further and I'm still looking forward to building ships. You just, there's so many ideas, like you said, and you just can't get to them all at one time. And parts aren't cheap. Um, as we all know, Lego's not a cheap, uh, cheap hobby. So, you know, there'll be a lot more ships and it'll be even more bustling than it looks now. But I kind of gave the idea that, you know, these two are looking out for a ship coming in, <laughs> into port. Um, so it'll be fun. Yeah, I mean, not all these ships will be here. I kind of use some things as placeholders. Obviously, Vikings would not be allowed right here, uh, sailing into their uh, into their river. But uh, yeah, it was. It always gives me an idea for scale. I like to have things nearby uh, to kind of when I'm building something. Does this look right against you know the background? What's there? One of the things I love about the village is the amount of unique building designs that you have in here. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your favorites that you've placed in here and some of the different design elements you've gone for and the, and the way that you've put a lot of these buildings together? Yeah, I think I think my favorite one is this uh, this the sand green one. I just love that color. Um, I love sand blue also. The sand colors are great. Sure. <clears throat> and they work particularly well, I think, in, in medieval, right? It's a little subdued color. Um, so that stonework is fun because you at the time I'd already done, you know, a million timbers and of various colors and I think I said this the last time there's not a single building that should be the same in here between the color of the actual the walls and the the, the brown or the tan that's used against it in the wood and the, and the roofs everything should be different Every, everything should be unique um, so yeah I've tried to change it up a bunch so I've really enjoyed the stone ones and I've tried to make um, you know for instance like the, the the yellow castle knights the crown knights give them something a little bit higher end 
uh, real estate because some of these are like in my world, their little uh, their embassy of sorts yeah. um, or what they trade. So I have the different factions, and they you know I, I said before I don't necessarily not going to build the castle for every faction that Legos come out with, but I want them here somewhere. So like these green knights, they the monkey knights, they might just get this little trade port and they <laughs> might trade something. Um, so that's all those are. So yeah, I've had a lot of fun. This is probably my favorite area of my entire kingdom just because of I feel it's exactly what I wanted. I wanted it nice and tight. I like medieval life and I think this 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 displays it well. And as we look beyond that, you kind of go out into a forested region there again, uh, which is super fun because it just it looks so expansive when you're looking out there <laughs> yeah. across the city. So what what were did you include different tree designs there as well? What were you kind of going for as that slopes down to the water? Yeah, I, li I like to mix it up. Um, there's definitely some different plant life as you get along the water, along the shore. Um, and there's always the rock, you know, as you build up, up into the upland area. Um, you know, there's a lot of pine trees, they scale well. I tend to build in a smaller scale even than even Lego does. I, that's why I like the Lion Knight's Castle so much because it was really a small scale. Um, and so I think the pine trees lend themselves well to that, that, that style of pine tree. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to just do that, you want to differentiate to kind of appreciate it. So there's some larger trees in there to kind of give you that, that scale. When you're laying out the city, how do you balance out the kind of packed city portions versus kind of forest and mountain and sort of making sure that you don't have too much of one thing and and is it tempting i would imagine you know you build up this great landscaping is it tempting to want to just put like crazy amounts of buildings in detail everywhere and you maybe have to hold yourself back sometimes from that or how does that work yeah you really have to cut it off right you have to <laughs> the, the, the your town stops here and that's how the towns in europe look right i mean it's not like america where we just we become in the modern times like just sprawl right and right and it just kind of peters out and just keeps going. You know, you have defined, very defined towns in, in, uh, in Europe. Um, so I've kind of tried to stick to that. I've tried to create um, landscaping that kind of stops the building. There's some sharp rock work in there that kind of doesn't lend itself well to building. So I've, that's how I've kind of stopped myself from building going further. Yeah. They, in my head, that's, they wouldn't have wanted to build further here. <laughs> it's, not, it's not conducive to it. There's just a little trail that goes up the hill up into the Coliseum from the second level. Yeah. And no. that, that, was a, that was a little problematic, right? Because I knew the back end was going to be off the main level and then off the, the Coliseum on this side, it comes in at the second level where people enter. So it was, uh, and my Coliseum was built off site on another table. Um, so <laughs> there was a lot of sizing with pieces and bringing it over for, for basically like a, like a template and coming over and just making sure. So that was built all off site. And then I kind of rolled it in and kind of just fixed the, the hill a little bit as it got closer. <laughs> and if anyone ever followed me on Instagram, you saw that I had dropped the thing. Uh, when I was going to transport it over from the table uh, to the main layout, and then it imploded on itself, and I had to rebuild it. I did it in one night, just stuck with it, and uh, got it done, but uh, it got there finally in one piece. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Would have made a great video, Josh. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry you weren't there for the live feed. <laughs> oh, man. Next, next time. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> Please no. And, you know, on the topic, yeah, I'm talking, you know, thinking about how you build and place things in here. Obviously, like reaching in, I'm sure is difficult with some of these. So what are the logistics of that, of kind of reaching things? Then another question that everybody always has is dusting something like this. And what is your approach to that? Yeah, so I've discovered recently, because everyone has said, how do you keep your room so, so dust free? I'm like, well, I don't really do anything. I mean, I'm, again, I'm OCD, I, I vacuum and my dog comes in here. Um, so there's nothing, there's no secret sauce to it other than I keep the door closed. And I noticed for a few weeks there, I was leaving the door open as I'd work late at night and I'd leave the door open. I'm like, oh, I don't feel like, or I thought I'd get back to it. I never got back to it. Close your doors. If you have a Lego <laughs> room, close the door and keep the outside dust from getting in. So that helps a lot. So, but I'm generally clean. I vacuum a lot yeah. and you know, you change your filters. Um, you know, it keeps it pretty clean. But yeah, the logistics of this is very difficult. I've crawled across this table a few times. If <laughs> when I'm building something and you know pulling something apart and piece goes flying across the room, and I, you know, of course it's got to be in the middle of the table, <laughs> and I'm sitting there crawling to go get this little one by one tile uh, to go pull it out. But <laughs> in the new room, I think um, not this river, but other rivers will act as an artificial bare, um, you know, spans of space, and where I'll have a you know an access point inside where I can get to stuff more closely and uh, it'll be just either a mountain range where it'll be built on both sides and stop or it'll just be a river where it'll just be blue on both sides and just go walk in as others have done. 
No, I think that, that sounds like a good plan. So as we cross the bridge then, we come to the largest castle section here. Yep. Such mm. such an incredible uh, layout. So yeah. It uh, looked a lot better before the Fright Nights came rolling around. <laughs> like, this was always pretty impressive. Then you, then you get that beast sitting over it's like, how come they got a bigger castle? So. You're making yourself look bad over here. <laughs> <laughs> they have to extend my, my slice. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, this was um, this is the main keep, and you can tell like this was the first section I ever built. This started back in in um, April of 2020. This this was the first ground I had laid in this entire build, and um, I'm still going to tile. I know people have written on Instagram, you know that looks dumb. It will get tiled. I just you know I have plenty of them. I just got to like the trees when I have free time, just start laying it down. I did originally was going to just do a plate, but I really like the way the tile looks. It just looks more realistic. Um, so I'll lay that in there. My, my hold up is how I want my waves to come crashing in. Um, there's some bigger ones I want to do, so I'm just holding off a little bit on that. But yeah, I mean, all of these have, you know, detail inside. And there's a, like a mini map of the actual mountain and the, the kingdom. And there's the port is in there. Um, that's a meeting of the, uh, the great minds of this castle getting together um, at this time. Um, yeah, and this is just, you know, the main keep. It's a simpler bill. You could see my style then was real simple. Just, it's a gray base with some masonry and some dark gray and some sand green in that order and uh, not a whole lot of plates at all you know there but you know that's fine and um, it made building a lot faster um, but you know I look back now and I'm I'm not happy with some of it especially the scaling on some of the windows for for you know I look now and it's like a tower that large should have a lot more windows it just looks wrong having one on one side so I'll probably at some point go back and fix some of these I've added this this center tower here you can tell it has more detail um, I had fun with that. I really wanted to use these these new pieces that had come out with the uh, the Super Mario set, um, Peach's Castle. Yeah. And um, yeah. And um, you know, this was a newer one. You guys saw this last time, but you know, over time, we, I've just kind of added things, and not unlike history, right? They've mm -hmm. as they've earned more money and you know uh, became stronger and uh, more you know wealthier. Yeah. Wealthier, you would, you right? would add more. Yeah. 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 They just built more. So. That's, um, you know, that's kind of what I've done here. I think it is kind of cool, though. I know you said it, it looks bad next to the new castle, but it's mm -hmm. also cool, though, to see kind of your your building type and, the, and then how much more detailed you've gotten with that and just, I think, how you've improved as a builder since you started on this section and everything that you've built out. So it's neat to be Thank able you. to kind of see, uh, you know, the improvements and just all the detail on that one and, and the different styles that you can approach, especially something like castles, which is something mm -hmm. that you just see, like, Countless builds of and there's but there's so many different ways you can do it. Absolutely, and I appreciate it. Thank you um, for the compliment. The um, yeah, yeah, I did, and you know there's a, there's another little Black Falcons fortress I had done over there, and it, yeah, I got some ideas from there. And it's I don't know I probably said at the time it's when you built it that it's a small little thing here I can I my my brain will give it more detail more time. Um, sometimes when I'm building this I just can't wait to get up because I can't wait to build the next tower. I can't wait to see in <laughs> in real life what my idea is going to look like. So you you kind of speed through and you have to temper yourself and slow down. So. The Fright Nights, I definitely slowed down um, and gave that thing a lot of detail. You were forced to by doing plate <laughs> by plate just about. Um, but um, I, I like the end result. It, and it's totally different. I didn't want to do the same thing over again. Um, this is very simplistic. Um, and really, it probably should have a little bit more detail for being lions and being gold and, and things like that. So I'll probably go back even here to the to some of the main like throne room back in there then and add some more details to it. What are, do you have other panels here that you can open, uh, like the one that you had on the back there? Yeah, there's a few more. There's, um, again, there's stairs in here. You guys might get a good video. <laughs> <laughs> Just secretly been hoping for something yeah, to break no. this whole time. And again, there's not much going on there, right? It was like, again, that scale is all off to me. So, and then there's one on the other side as well. I get this one is it more time consuming to come back through to an existing build and kind of redo it than it is to just start from scratch or what, how does that, how do you kind of approach that in your mind? I guess it depends. I, I would say it's faster if I go back and do it, especially at this point because I, I build faster now. Yeah. Um, I have a better idea of what I want to do. I know what kind of the surrounding looks like now and so I can build to that. Um, yeah, so I could probably go faster. This would be, you know, I, I look at these two, particularly these two towers, I could do a lot more and a, a lot better with them um, for sure. Well, with your continued expansion, you'll, I'm sure you'll have more opportunities in the future. <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you just you, you want to build other factions. So it already in my head, it's I want to build Vladik's Fortress, uh, which was fun about the Fright Nights because not a lot of people did them, right? So right. a lot of people commented like, oh, you know, a lot of, not a lot of, you know, we haven't seen a lot of this build uh, for Fright Nights. So Vladik's Fortress I want to do. Uh, I mean, I love the, the Black Knight's Fortress. Um, so I kind of want to do them. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things out there to do. So that does take us into another village portion here. And 
<coughs> these buildings are maybe even pat more packed in than you've got yep. over there, which is crazy. You look at how this yep. this is. So how how do you place these here and kind of keep this all straight? Yeah, so that's purposeful, <laughs> right? Because in my head, the real estate inside the castle walls <laughs> is going to be a lot, you know, more valuable. Yeah. Right. So you're really going to have a lot more, you know, overhang. You're going to have a lot more cramped area. They're going to be larger. They're going to look a little better to me in in my head. Uh, than the stuff that's out in the port that's not defended. So this is the wealthier people live here, right? They're safe. Um, so yeah, again, I, I wanted to make a road. This road does do this a little bit, but I probably should have skewed them, but you could pack the buildings in better. So again, in my head, I'm probably going to redo that a little bit too. Um, but again, it's it's jam-packed. I want it to be, you know, a lot of market stalls. Um, you know, you have the preachers and, and the things. Thank you, K-Town for Bricks, for making some, you know, monks and nuns and stuff. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, so just, you know, it's a lot more... Probably they're a little bit more uh, detailed in here. How much uh, third-party products like that do you have sprinkled throughout? Is it just the minifigs mostly, or? Yeah, it's, it's, it's so far. The um, <laughs> I was always a purist for the longest time. Probably up until about three years ago, I was just Lego and that's it. Anything else would get chucked or you know mashed. Um, but with Lego not producing Castle for us Castle fans for a number of years, you know we had to find an alternative. Especially with me, I, I love townspeople, so. Uh, when K Town and some other companies came out with awesome-looking peasants and townspeople, you know, you just, you, they add so much life and so much variety to the to the builds. It's, it's more interesting. Uh, but Lego, you know, now is coming out with the medieval town square, and they've got what four new um, townspeople, and just in that set alone. So online peb is going to kill all of us in six <laughs> months, when, or yeah, six months after the release when it's available. Um, so that's great. You know, uh, Eclipse Graphics just came, or I just discovered it's been out for a number of months, but they have stained glass that's available. So I've never used third-party parts before. Um, so I'm definitely going to add that. And they had one for the Fright Nights, which is which is amazing. Um, so yeah, it, so but generally I don't use the parts or I haven't used the weapons yet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely the townspeople. And you, this is a very impressive structure here as well. This kind of the, the first thing you encounter when crossing the bridge over the river. So what was the design for this like? Yeah, so the main gatehouse, um, it's, it's got a barracks inside of it. There's beds and there's an armory inside. Um, so they're all real close. There's actually hot oil you know, holes in there and those arrow slits kill holes in there as well. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a main gate drawbridge. There's, it's all detailed inside. Um, <laughs> I don't want to pull it apart. It's all modular, though. I can get to all of that. It's um, yeah. So I just wanted this very strong-looking uh, main gatehouse. Yeah. I'll probably again. There's another tower. I'll probably redo coming out of it, uh, just because it's 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 a little plain. And I like how you went for the more circular designs on the, the tower wall since everything is such sharp angles there. Then I think that's a nice contrast. And Thank you me. even have. Areas, you know, where you can move around the tower, so it's very realistic feeling when you look yeah, at that. Yeah, good point. I always like, again, my minifigures be able to get everywhere, so they, they have to be able to walk along this wall and get to the towers, and there's, you know, be able to go up and down them all over the place, and I did want those towers to be circular, a little different. I wanted this wall to come on an angle, kind of contour with how the, the land did, right? So mm -hmm. there's a little piece of water, and they built as far as they could, you know, up against it. I've always liked this technique with the, the cheese slopes there, right? And then just a little bit of space yeah. to create that so, sort of like cross effect cross, in there. Yeah. It, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah, that was important to me to get that into the, some of the newer builds as I moved on here. So and then did you say you have plans for what, what you're going to add to this section? Is it more village or what is your thoughts here? So in my head, so I had originally planned this was going to be the cutoff here. This was the edge and that's where the medieval, you know, uh, market worked yeah. um, at, on a slice. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I if I start getting you know my own jealousy of myself, or <laughs> there's something else that looks bigger, and I think this should be bigger. This yeah, this in my head, the head cannon is this is a big town inside the walls that continues out this way, um, and the keep continues out that way. So there's there's more to it, and, you know. And sometimes just leaving it as is and letting your the the person who looks at it kind of imagine what's there, and maybe that's even better rather than me telling the whole story. Sure, right, right. You create such a beautiful slice here, and then just kind of let the viewer fill in mm -hmm. the rest of it. Yep. So that takes us kind of outside the walls then to this incredible mountain <laughs> section. <laughs> and we've talked about trees a couple of times. Were there any other different designs you included in this section? No, these are purposely similar. Um, okay. As I get to other parts of the kingdom, I will change the variety drastically. Um, but it was important to me to kind of keep them close to what I had there. There's some darker, larger trees on this side. It's a little different than the other side. But yeah, it continues the same idea. I didn't... You know, it's nice to have variety, but too much kind of takes your eyes all over the place. So you kind of want to keep that baseline background and let other things tell the story. For me here, it was the mountain itself. 
um, and I wanted your eyes to be glued to that, see the snow cap portion of it, the little water coming down. That was important for me to be able to look at here and just have the, the trees kind of be the background. I like what you've done with the waterfall. I actually just saw some similar uh, piece usages to that at the, the show in Atlanta that we were at, where I think this is a good example of not everything has to be like crazy numbers of pieces or super mm -hmm. detailed packed, like just using a large window or windshield type pieces for waterfalls can actually be like a really effective way to represent that water. Yeah, yeah, sometimes just keep it simple, right? And uh, just let the water just flow off. I just want a nice, you know, it just come rushing off there mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of water on the bottom. I'll let the detail do it inside the water with the, the spraying and the, the foaming a bit. Um, but yeah, just, uh, that, I'd seen that used before. I, I, I ordered those pieces to be able to be used somewhere else. I've got more <laughs> and I wanted that water to keep falling off the mountain as the snow melt comes down. And that does take us up to the snow and kind of the, the ice capped sections up here where you've got another little hidden river as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. There's a little, uh, there's some melt going on the top of that and my, my snow guardians live up there. I don't have the figures in there, but you see their little area in there, there's a little fire. Um, and that's kind of where they hold out away from everybody. They want to be left alone and they're up in that area. Yeah, so eventually this, this melt will come down back on the backside. And if anybody's been watching my Instagram, it's kind of sat there for a year and a half plus because I can't kind of figure out what I want to do with the backside. Originally, it was just going to be forestmen back here. Um, I didn't like that idea of being that close. I wanted to put them in an actual forest. Um, then I thought about wolf pack, and now I think I might do dwarves in a little uh, mountain dwarf kingdom. So, and you know, they're friendly even in in lore to the <laughs> to, to the to the uh, lion or the crown faction. So we'll. Uh, I think that I think it's a good spot for them over here. So I'm still trying to figure out how I want that design to look. So that's why that's kind of stayed that way for a bit. But this is a good opportunity to see behind the scenes, which is a question we get a lot with our convention videos of these crazy builds, especially when it's a large mountain or something. Uh, how is that build up underneath there? And so what are the different elements you've used? It looks like kind of a combination of Duplo and system here. Yeah, yeah. So I've settled in um, at this point in my, in my building on Duplo and large brick bricks. Okay. I keep wanting to call them brick plates. Um, the large bricks, the 8x16s or of that size uh, or using the four by tens or twelves that connect them in between. So it's a good skeleton um, reinforced system, you know, lateral, you know, and everything. Um, and then locking them into the outside. So you kind of see where I've kind of planned for some things to lock into the outside. So they'll kind of just hold it all together on all sides. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a much more economical way of building. Um, you can get Duplo pretty cheap um, if you search for it. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it works really well. It's really, um, it's really strong inside. And as we come around to this side, you see uh, a lot of the building materials here. So what, yeah. what are, where are these bricks going to be placed? Kind of what, what are you working on yeah, here? So th this is my, um, I'm, go I'm building out of the port and getting into the forest and, and landscaping and roads, right? So dark green I use for my, my bed of my forest. And then, because I just want that to be dark in the background. I don't want it to be bright. I did a little brighter as I got into the grass. Uh, and then the dark tan I use for all of my, my, uh, my roads and my pathways. Uh, walking areas and then sand green sand green or olive green i use as my um you know other color for rocks and and whatnot or if something is is wet in a wet area i like to use that so those parts i always have a lot of they overflow from my parts bin so i just keep them out here it's much easier to have parts in, in these useful kind of sorters um to be able to build quickly with yeah and I know we saw this big castle section at the show in Atlanta, Atlanta BrickCon. Would you ever take any of the other parts of the layout to a convention or is most of this gonna stay in the house as you just expand on it? Yeah, so it was always built to be modular, thankfully so to go to the basement. Yeah. And uh, it can theoretically go anywhere because they all will fit through doorways and they'll go. I just don't think it's practical to take that. I I'll probably lose half of it. Uh, <laughs> especially the first section is not as strong. I think as we got, as I got to the port, it's it's pretty strong, and the modulars are smaller. Um, so if I you know we get a U-Haul and just slide everything on a floor on maybe like egg crate foam or something, it'd probably be safe. But aside from that, no, I probably wouldn't take the rest of it. But I I'd like my new idea of kind of building a section of so of of a new castle, a new faction, and then I'll take that with me. So as I build some of the other castles they'll definitely be modular to take places. That Coliseum can definitely go. Um, that was definitely built to go to, uh, to a show on its own. Um, and then the, the surrounding area can definitely go as well. So again, like I said, the, the port can definitely go. Um, I think it'd be all right. Yeah. So for people not familiar with the Atlanta BrickCon show, it was really amazing. They 
like doubled in size, I think, this year. And then next year uh, yeah. is going to be even better in 2025. So uh, if you're in the Atlanta area at all, definitely look up that show and check that out. I'm sure you'll have more work there oh, in yeah. the future. There'll, there'll be more stuff coming. <laughs> and, I, and I think our, our lug, Peach Lug, will have more stuff coming, too. It, it, was, a, it was a fantastic show. Um, you know, I thought, I'm, I'm hoping one day it competes with, the, with the, some of the other larger ones here in the U.S. And you mentioned a few different times throughout our tour here, your Instagram, and I think it's really cool how you post updates over there. So for people who haven't checked you out uh, online, is Instagram where you're most active? Is that pretty much where you generally yeah, post? Yeah, that's pretty much where I stay is on Instagram, and it's Intense Bricks, I-N-T-N-S-S -S Bricks. I'm um, going to have my go gothic little sign up here. But, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that's where I post my updates. I try to post a couple <laughs> updates a week just to... Again, I love watching other people build, and I love to see what they're doing with the different new pieces that are coming out, or even old pieces, and what they're doing with Castle. I am predominantly Castle, Fantasy, Medieval. Um, that's all I build. Some say it's snobby, but <laughs> it's just, it's safer that way. I mean, I, you know, again, I, I love Star Wars, and I love these other things, but if I spent money on the price of these Star Wars sets that come out, you'd, I'd easily be broken. Wouldn't be able to build anything. This Fright Night's Castle would never come to fruition. So, yeah, uh, I just stick to Castle. They give us a couple sets a year, but get a bunch of those. And then, um, yeah, so that's what I put on Instagram. Yeah, I think the, the number one key with that at the end of the day is if you're having fun with the hobby, that's the most important thing. Yeah. And, you know, if, if that means that you just build all in Castle and that's what yeah. you enjoy, there's no problem with that. that I, I don't see That's pretty much what I've done since 1984. <laughs> I've, I've stuck to it, and, um, yeah, that, I build Castle. So my brother was always the town builder, and he had a couple space sets, and maybe I had a couple pirates early on, but I quickly went right back to Castle. Um, and just stuck with it. It's, it's my bread and butter. That's really cool, though. And we'll make sure to put a link in the description of the video to your Instagram so people want to continue to follow along and see all the, the progress and the future updates you have here. Definitely check that out. Do you try to keep track of the number of minifigures or piece count at all on this in your, in your head? No. I, I, the Fright Nights is... I, I don't have a clue. Well, I have an idea, but it's north of 50,000 in the Fright Nights just because of how many small pieces are yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, as far as like uh, figures, I have, I have pretty good idea of what I come in. I mean, there's there's north of sixty figures sitting in there. Um, there's well over you know three hundred townspeople already in there, and I've got a good. I, I like to restock, restock, restock. <laughs> so because you know this kingdom in in my in my head will keep expanding, so I need to keep filling in townspeople, and I want to have that that everyday life out there, not just armies. And um, I'm fortunate to have pretty large armies, but. I never went out and said, "Let me go buy 500 of this or you know a thousand of that." It's just what I've accumulated over the years. When you when, you know when you collect for almost 40 years or over 40 years, you you you, you tend to generate you know pick up a lot of stuff. So that's um, I, I have a pretty a lot of large factions. Yeah, John's showing some of your different army building yeah. uh, that, over that, there. That's its own thing altogether, <laughs> right? And I'll I'll spend a day just you know uh, fig barfing. You know, figures together, just taking different pieces, and I, it's like my own little like build a mini figure station back here where I have heads sorted um, out, and you just put them all together, put different hairs, and create characters in your head of what you want them to be, and kind of what you think happened with this family or that family, or they have no family, and you know, so it's, it's so it's a lot of fun. You can just have you know all the fun you want with your figures. Absolutely, and we mentioned Atlanta BrickCon, but do you have plans for any other shows throughout this year? Will you be displaying anything at other shows? Yes, yeah, so I plan on taking the Fright Night's Castle in its enlarged form, so I'm going to expand to it again. Um, I'll take that to Brick Fair Virginia this year as well. Great, very cool. Another fantastic show for people to check out as Absolutely. well. Yep. Thank you so much, though, for, for taking us through the, the entire layout once again. The additions that you've done here and just the added details are amazing, Thank and you. the ideas you have for the future sound incredible. <laughs> Thank you. So hopefully Thank we'll you. make this a recurring feature here on Beyond the Brick and come back when, when we come back for Atlanta BrickCon and stop by again. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming by.